I want to talk circadian rhythm real quick, and this one goes out to my night owls. Actually, I say my fellow night owls because really, truly, my whole life, naturally, I've been a night owl. Um, if, if, if left uh, unmanaged, I will instantly become the kind of person who just stays up a little later, a little later, a little later, so I'm staying up to like 12 a.m., 1 a.m., <laughs> okay? So, um, but I want to talk about this because I have actually turned myself into a, an early bird, and um, that is definitely possible, and it's about resetting your circadian rhythm, um, and I love it. It's been amazing. I do not feel like I'm fighting with my biology. I feel like I have instilled habits and routines that have brought me a lot more energy in my life by doing this, so just wanted to share. Um, if you're interested in circadian rhythm, two resources that are awesome. One is Dr. Sachin Panda. Panda, I don't know how to say it. He's awesome researcher on circadian rhythm. He has a TEDx talk that is super good on it. Um, and also Tim Biohacker here on Instagram is really big on circadian rhythm and has amazing information. Um, he runs the Health Optimization Summit, which is the biggest biohacking conference in Europe. Um, he's actually coming on my podcast soon and goes into this, but he has a whole course on health optimization and circadian rhythm is the first thing he talks about. So those are two really good resources. All right, so why care about circadian rhythm? All right, for the first thing, the, honestly, like to kind of hit you where I know you're interested and that's body fat and body composition. If you get in a pattern of staying up later at night, two things happen. One, now you're, you're staying up later and what happens? The longer you stay up, the hungrier you get again after dinner. Who's been in that boat? I know I know. if I stay up late enough, I stay up till midnight, I'm gonna get real hungry around like 11.30 or something. I haven't eaten since like five, I'm gonna get hungry again. And so then what happens? We eat food, which then gives us energy, and we stay up a little bit later, but guess why this sucks? It's not just about body fat. This sucks because our bodies are meant to be able to repair our stomach lining and be able to make good microbiome during that nighttime process. Our whole body repairs. Sleep is a repair process. But what happens when we got a bunch of food in our stomach that we just ate? Now our body can't do that. It's busy trying to digest all this food and send nutrients everywhere. So during your repair process of sleep, you're not actually repairing. You're digesting, which also can make you have less good sleep quality, right? It can decrease sleep quality because you're keeping staying in a lighter phase of sleep because your body's busy trying to digest all that food you just ate. So that's a big deal. Um, so then when you wake up, uh, Dr. Pan Panda, I don't know how you say his last name, but what he describes, uh, they did a study on some mice and they gave half of the mice, these are the same, born the same parents, you know, same genetic mix. They gave half of the mice food to be able to eat whenever they want. They put them both on like a standard American diet version of chow. Half of them, they let them eat whenever they want. Half of them, they put them on basically intermittent fasting between an eight and 12 hour eating window. At the end of 18 weeks, the mice who ate whenever they want all had disease, all kinds of different diseases. The ones that were intermittent fasting in a closed eating window, no disease at all, none of them. Crazy, right? Okay, I'm, bit, I'm hitting the canyon here, headed up to Park City, so I don't lose you guys. I'll try to be quick. So what's interesting about that study is it's a, a study showing that it's not just about what you eat, but when you eat, because they were eating the same thing. They were not cal calorie, you know, watching any sort of macronutrients or calories. It was just within that eating window. And so when you get better sleep, you wake up, and this is where Dr. Panda starts talking about clocks in our bodies. So he describes that they have discovered that we, our brain has a clock and every cell in our body has a clock that's on a time release of chemicals and hormones. So if you're in that life where one day you wake up at five and the next day you wake up at 10 and one day you eat at 6 a.m. and other nights you're eating at 12 a.m. before you go to bed, you're confusing your body on what to do in order to release these hormones and neurotransmitters in a cascade that's, that keeps us in a more efficient place. It's taxing on the body, it's exhausting on the body. So when we get into this flow, and that's why I love intermittent fasting, that's why I get up early every day and do my meditation, my morning routine, my workout, because I know that my body will become uh, more easily able to predict when to release those chemicals to get up and go, 
when to release melatonin so I can go to sleep at night. Um, Dr. Panda also talks, I'm gonna be, I feel so American, I, I think it's Panda. <laughs> but he talks about how um, blue light, which I'm sure you guys are familiar, but they there's a, a protein called melanopsin. So when blue light goes into our eyes at night, which is not natural, right? At, in, at nighttime, blue light goes away in nature, but we have it on all of these screens. And so that goes in through our eyes and it prevents, that's an alertness chemical and it prevents the release of melatonin. So that's why you see all these biohackers wearing blue light glasses. Now, what, one thing that's interesting in that is um, there is some DNA evidence that some people might be more sensitive to this than others. But, um, you know, if you have a hard time going to sleep at night, what, the first thing I'd look at is what is your schedule? You know, like, yeah, did you sleep in super late and you're, you're all a mess on that? Did you work out at 10 o'clock, 9 p.m.? <laughs> we just boosted a norepinephrine, adrenaline, all these upper chemicals. Of course, you're going to have a harder time going to sleep. Um, so the last thing I wanted to hit on is exercise. When to optimally ex exercise for circadian rhythm. So what they found in the research is 7 a.m. or, you know, give or take, early morning and between 1 and 4 p.m. afternoon. Both are correlated with positive circadian rhythm. I don't know how you 1 to 4 p.m.ers do it. That is like death to me. I do not want to work out at that time. I really like, we have this um, release of our upper chemicals when we first wake up. Um, we release adrenaline, some cortisol to put blood sugar into our bloodstream to give us energy naturally. So I love to work out in that time period. Um, if I wait till like 10 a.m., it starts going like, right? So when we wake up, we get some light in our eyes and we go work out, we get our bodies on this time clock that just keeps it going. Like I know our bodies are like, I know exactly what to do. It's workout time. Oh, it's sleep time. And the last thing I'll say about like getting up early, cause this is not natural to me. I, I had to shift this in my body. It's natural now, but it wasn't. I used to look at early birds, like y'all are weird people. Like there's no freaking way I'm getting up at 4.35 o'clock in the morning, you crazy weirdos. Well, I am one of those crazy weirdos now, and I've, I've shifted my body into that pattern. So it's simply that. It's just a pattern that I'm used to now. But what's cool about it is when you get up that early, you actually start getting tired by 8, 9 o'clock at night. And guess what? Then guess what you don't aren't tempted to do? Go eat again late at night and ruin your body's ability to repair your gut lining and the other parts of your body that need to be repaired while you're sleeping. I've said this for so many years and I'll say, wow, gorgeous, the sun is rising in Park City, but I'm gonna get washed out here. Um, I've said this so many times, one of the most simple, easy ways to lose weight or maintain a good body composition is don't eat at night. Don't eat at night. I know you've got all these like calorie counter coaches and stuff and they're like, it doesn't matter when you eat, but it's not just about that. Like it's the combination, oh my God, Sorry guys, <laughs> I gotta look at the road here for a minute. But um, it's it's the combination of a few things. It's one, it's like allowing your body to be able to repair while you're sleeping. And also the last thing is like just from a common sense level, eating late at night, you do not wanna be hungry when you have the least amount of willpower. Who, who feels like they make real good decisions for themselves at 11 o'clock at night? <laughs> Yeah, no, I heard somebody say once, nothing nothing that builds your life happens after 10 p.m. I really feel that way. Like, just freaking go to sleep. The other night, yesterday, or, or Sunday night, I got home from my trip, and I had this, like, one little project I, I wanted to crank out, but it was, like, 9.30 at night, and it was interesting to see my, my pattern, like, my stress response, because as I was sitting down to go do it at, like, 9.30, I wanted to go grab a snack, and I was like, hold on a second. This is unlike me for to eat that late at night, right? And I was like, I shifted into choosing instead to go to bed, and all of a sudden I didn't feel hungry. And I was like, ah, huh, that's just a stress response. Interesting. I was like, nope, day's over, girl. Surrender. It's over. You can work on it in the morning. And that's what I did. I went to bed, felt amazing when I woke up, felt lean and strong, ready to go, cranked out some work for an hour, hit the gym. And boom, here we go again, you know? So I cannot emphasize enough how important circadian rhythm is. If you work, if you're a shift worker, find a new job.
the end of the story period. It is one of the most detrimental things you can do to your health. There's something else out there. If you're a nurse, I've had so many nurse clients, I cannot tell you what I have seen happen in their health when they get off of this, some days I work this schedule and some days I work in the middle of the night and then they get off of that and they find something else for themselves and they start working regular hours, boom. They start sleeping regular, everything goes up. Instead of being this like anxious, depressed mess that can't lose weight and they just go into like power and they start losing weight and they start feeling amazing. So if you're a shift worker, you gotta get out of that. There are solutions. That is not the only option for you in your life. I promise you can find something else. Detrimental to human health. Shift work is detrimental to human health. You want to take years off your life? Be a shift worker. What I mean by that is working all different schedules and hours. So if you want to make things flow, when you want to make this game easy, get into a healthy circadian rhythm. And for me, a lot of that, I, I was real good on the morning routine because I'm a doer and a goer, right? But I was not so good. Be doers and goers are not always super awesome on the evening routine. I just realized I had like a string on my jacket this whole time. <laughs> um, if you can work on that, and a lot of it is letting go. I actually used to do a process called sunset gazing. It's like a spiritual thing where you like watch the sun set and like, and like try to emulate that in your life of like of seeing how nature doesn't like hold, try to hold on and cling to everything. It just like lets it go. It's okay. Tomorrow's going to come. It's that same concept at night. It's like, let it go. You know, today was beautiful. Gratitude for everything that happened today and looking forward to tomorrow. You know, so my, my nighttime routine is one. I just, I calm down. I'm, I'm present. I'm not, not doing like crazy stuff. I'm not like scanning through social media and reading personal development books and watching like things that excite my brain on YouTube. Um, I'm not, uh, going out and doing things at like nine o'clock at night, eight 30 at night. Right. It's like, it's shut down time. I'm present with my kids or with myself, uh, cleaning up, just kind of like chilling. And then for me, what has helped is setting out my clothes for the gym the next day later, because it's just this little signal, like that I'm like looking forward to going, it, for some reason it helps me look forward to going to sleep because I'm so looking forward to my morning routine and gym time the next day. Um, I do take melatonin. I'm actually very, very interested in high dose melatonin right now. It's something I'm looking into. I've got Dr. John Laurent coming on my podcast soon to talk about that. Um, and so I, I do use melatonin, what they have found. Well, this is what Ben Asadi told me at biohacking conference. I haven't like looked into this yet, but he said that we found that um, taking melatonin actually does not downregulate your, your natural production of melatonin. So I'll look into that, but I have found that to be true because sometimes I'm just like, I don't need melatonin. I'm freaking tired as crap. I just go to sleep. So I haven't found it to uh, downregulate my, my own production of melatonin. And for me, high dose melatonin, what I've experimented with is anywhere from 20 to 60 milligrams. So yeah, definitely high. Dr. John Laurent, he has a melatonin, high dose melatonin suppository. I kid you not. <laughs> you want to be a super biohacker, you, then you understand that there's a lot of bioabsorption from suppositories. He has a 200 milligram uh, melatonin suppository with glutathione in it. Very interesting. So I just, I, I'm excited to get him on the podcast and, and pick his brain about all that. Um, all right. Uh, one thing, little note on that I'll share real quick. Um, he was telling me that melatonin acts on the same pathway as caffeine. So that CYP1A2 gene. So if you know if you're a fast metabolizer of caffeine or a slow metab metabolizer of caffeine, you'll be the same with melatonin. I thought that was fascinating. I have never felt groggy from melatonin, but I know that some people have said they do. And I wonder if they're slow metabolizers of caffeine because I'm a fast metabolizer of caffeine. So maybe that's why I've, I've never felt groggy from melatonin. It puts me out like that. And it's like amazing. Um, all right. So yeah, that's kind of my nighttime routine. And I just like, it's like, let it go. Like it just don't be on screens and all that stuff. Like just breathe deeply. Breathing deeply is like one of the best go to sleep hacks in the freaking world. Um, I used to teach that to my kids when they were little. It's like, just breathe really deep. It will put you to sleep so fast. So, um, yeah, nighttime routine, letting go. A lot of people like to do journaling, gratitude, uh, visualizing how they want their day to go the next day. So their subconscious can start working on manifesting that the next day, whatever you want to do, you can do uh, Joe Dispenza's meditations are really nice at nighttime. Um, so sleep meditations, but some sort of nighttime routine that gets you into sleepy time. We are basically just giant babies, giant babies. 
<laughs> and what a baby, if you've had kids, you know that kids thrive with routine. It makes for very happy babies and we are the same way. It makes us big old happy babies. So anyway, just encouraging that um, to get in that flow, working out at the same time, stop eating after dinner, allow yourself to let go, watch out for blue light, see how you respond to that. You can put um, things on your phone or laptop if you absolutely have to be on it in, in the evening, you know, to make sure you're not getting blue light. You can get blue light blocking glasses. I have a discount code with Raw Optics, which is awesome blue light blocker company and their stuff is super stylish. So it's on my website if you guys want to check that out under discounts. And um, yeah, that's it. Circadian rhythm. You can change it. You can turn yourself into an early bird. And I have talked to many people who were like, no, no, I pride myself on being, my, my flow is night owl and I'm creative and it's better for me. And I have had so many people who have told me that they used to be like that and they switched to the morning thing and they're like, nah, it's way better. It's way better. It is. It's way better. And there's nothing like killing it. Like you have accomplished so much in the day before everybody else is even like, starting to get up and get their coffee I freaking like it I freaking like it and then you're not hungry at night and all the things it just creates this awesome flow so just encouraging that if you don't have a good circadian rhythm and you're all over the place you're making your life unnecessarily difficult you're making weight loss unnecessarily difficult you're making yourself more likely to be anxious and depressed um, you're inhibiting your the longevity of your life your body's ability to repair itself and all of that so circadian rhythm is huge again if you want to look into that more dr pachin sachin panda or tim biohacker awesome resources on that okay thanks for listening guys hope you guys have a great day bye